Welcome to another episode of Ben Reviews Random Technology on the Interwebs. This time we are checking out the All Powers S200 Portable Power Bank 200 Watt 154 Watt Hour. That's a, that's a long name. That's 41,600 milliamp hours of charging goodness with an AC power plug, a USB C slot here, and two USB A slots. There's also one wireless Qi charger. A random fact off the top here is this plug is not actually upside down. This is actually how plugs are supposed to be because they're more safe and secure when they're positioned this way. Anyway, on their website, All Powers markets this battery bank as the ultimate on the go power bank. So now that I've been using this ultimate on the go power bank for about three months now, in this review, I'll let you know if it stands up to the ultimate on the go power bank ranking that it shows on the website. Our itinerary for the rest of the day goes like this. Unboxing, specifications, including inputs and outputs and features, and then some handy use cases and its quirks. Oh, and if you are here just looking for a 10% discount code, use BD10 at checkout on the All Powers website. But I obviously encourage you to stick around and see what this little beast can do in a few situations that you might find yourself in. And, you know, some of the weird quirks that you should be aware of before you hit that buy button. Disclaimer though, All Powers did send me this for a quick video review, and I have not shown them this video before publishing it. These are all of my own opinions and research, thus me calling them out a few times uh, for things that I feel obliged to call them out for. Overall though, this is a legitimately pretty good product and I've been using it for the last three months. It's decent. I use it like on a regular basis. Without further ado, let's cut to the unboxing footage from three months ago when I hadn't tried to destroy it yet. Woo! Woo. <laughs> wow, so mesmerizing, a box being opened. As you can see, this is what comes with it. I'll head into the specifications while we continue unboxing this. Let's start off with powering this thing. You have a few different options from their solar panel offerings that are sold in different packages over to the regular and standard 18 volt two amp wall charger that's provided with all units. Just a normal barrel connector, nothing fancy needed. You can also charge this via the USB-C port if you have a cable and the charger to support that because that's not included. These are the USB-C input specs on screen because that's just a mouthful to say. Oh, and there actually is a really cool feature. You may not use this, but it is a cool feature that they included in the circuitry. You can fast dual charge with both the AC wall charger and the USB-C port at the same time to get a fast charge of one and a half hours. So. Those are the ways of charging this thing. On to the most exciting and important thing that battery banks do for you, actually charging your stuff. And to do that, we have four output methods over five outputs. There's one AC outlet running at 110 volts, 60 hertz, 200 watts. There's also one wireless Qi charger. The Qi or QI wireless charging standard is supported with most phones nowadays, including my Samsung phone. And if you have an iPhone, you're good to go too. It'll charge at five volts and one amp, maxing out at 2.4 amps. There are also two USB-A ports. USB-A are the stereotypical rectangular ports that everyone thinks of when someone says USB port, at least before the USB-C charging standard started taking over. They charge at five volts and 2.4 amps, maxing out at three amps. Speaking of USB-C, there's one of those to share between the input and output. I know I mentioned it over in the input section, but all of the other specs are seemingly simple. And then there's this line, which reminds me that, wow, USB-C is really smart because it can do so many voltages and wattage variants. So five volt, nine volt, 12 volt, 15 volt, 20 volt, and three amps and power delivery at a maximum of 60 watt, also known as PD60W. On to features. This is the on button. And this is the AC on button. To turn off the unit, you hold the power button for three long seconds. I say three long seconds because I wish you could just click it off, but I guess they have it there. So if you're running something important, the unit doesn't just accidentally get turned off if you bump it. Options would be nice though, because 
I don't want to have to waste my time holding it down. I know it's just three seconds. Whatever. It just feels like a long time when you're holding it. It weighs just under three pounds, which is pretty light, but it's not the lightest travel thing out there. But inverters that allow for AC power are part of the weight. Sacrifices have to be made depending on your needs for versatility. I like having a power plug. It's very handy. It also has a really bright screen. This is it in broad daylight, and you can actually see it quite well. Don't mind my already scuffed screen. No brightness control though, so in the dark it's blinding until the display turns off after exactly 30 seconds. No biggie, just an observation. The estimated charge remaining via hours is a nice feature for most people, although I would personally like to see three digits instead of two because you get to see 99 hours, but not more. Is it at 200 hours? 300 hours? I don't know. And I would prefer the percentage to be a larger number. Again, just personal preference. Speaking of the display, a legitimate concern, but more of a small uh, annoyance, is the fact that the DC out doesn't show decimal points. So devices that draw less than one amp don't show as a power draw at all, even though power is in fact being drawn from the unit. It's not a huge deal because most people will be drawing more than one amp via their phones. Phones are probably the main thing you're going to be charging with this. But for things like smaller LED lights, etc., that could be annoying for users. Now we can head over to the use cases. Here are some examples of how I would use this and have actually been using this. So in the time that I've had this battery bank for review, the most memorable time was when it actually allowed me to do my job more efficiently than without it. I was out filming for a video production for the city of London and needed to stay up in the air for quite a while with my drone. Here's a great use case for this. I have been using this for the last few shoots for the drone specifically. Here we are, I had 100% before, we're at 83% here. And I have fully charged a few batteries at this point. This one's nearly dead. <laughs> um, so this one is nearly ready to go, but I'm gonna use this one because I need to actually fully drain a battery for a time lapse for 20 minutes in the air. There is a lot of traffic footage to gather and waiting for some things to happen, like police cars going by, along with some time lapses from the sky, which kind of just blasts through battery life because you're just hovering for as long as your battery will let you. And meanwhile, by the time I get to it, I'll have another battery ready. So it's pretty cool, actually. Anyway, I burned through seven drone batteries that day with my drone, and I only have three. And I was only able to do that with the S200 in my car and endlessly charging the drone batteries as I went. So anyways, this thing's been pretty fun, pretty useful so far. It's super handy and helped me get the shots that I needed, which in turn helped me pay my bills. That's good. Except for this other production shoot day where this happened. Okay, so weird thing. I plugged this back in. I've been flying for a bit, uh, hoping to have charged it a little bit, but over here it's saying 6.4 hours, but we're blinking at zero. And we were at like 80 something percent. So I'm wondering what the heck happened there. So I don't know what's happening. This was like fully charged. This should have a lot more oomph than charging just not even one of these. And it's the only time it's happened, and it was very weird. It was hot out, maybe that was it, but it just died. Just went to 0% for apparently no reason. Good news is I am done what I need to get done. Theoretically, I've tested it and it should last 20 days on standby with the power button accidentally pressed, but more on that in just a bit. Another example is beach days. We try to be fairly minimal and not bring too much because, you know, it's a freaking beach, guys. Don't bring your whole house with you. But if you are going to the beach with a group, whether that's your family or friends, tossing this in with a few charge cables in with all of your stuff could be a hero level move because you know that there's always someone who forgets to charge their phone or something and then they need to quickly go grab something in the nearest town or something like that and yet they have no power on their phone. Don't worry, you can be the hero. Just plug in right here, or they could just plop it right on there. Another option is just plopping it down on a picnic table or in a bag at the beach, in the shade preferably, uh, and just yelling that this is the charge station, everyone. Plug in, put your phone on it, do whatever you want. Uh, use it all up, it's here to be used, everyone. Just keep it out of direct sunlight, as with any battery. 
especially on beach days, it's going to get pretty hot. As for camping, that's a bit of a different story because those trips are more involved and typically span a weekend, a few days or even a week. Because of that, you might actually drain through this battery after a day, two or three. One thing I like to do with battery banks at provincial and national parks here in Canada uh, that I wouldn't ever do with my phone because I don't want to leave it somewhere is bring your charging cable and your battery bank to a washroom facility or whatever the, the places that have power around the campsites. Plug the power bank in, head back to your campsite and continue living your life and having fun uh, and camping and then come back after an hour or two and pick up your charged up battery bank. Campers are less likely to steal a battery bank than they are phones. I've been doing this with other battery banks for over a decade and no one's ever stolen my battery bank. Just kind of camper etiquette, so that doesn't really happen. It could, but hasn't happened to me yet. Quick battery tip, by the way, especially for this kind of camping situation. Every battery that I'm aware of charges faster from 20% to 80% than from 80% to 100%. This is a whole other video that I'd love to do uh, in the future, but uh, the key takeaways are that you can avoid dropping your battery levels on modern devices uh, that use lithium ion battery chemistries to 0%. That's not great for your battery, actually really bad. And it is better for most batteries to be charged more frequently between 30 and 70% than always charging your batteries up to 100 and dropping them down to zero. Whew, that was a lot. But just doing that can increase the lifespan of, let's say your phone by double, quadruple, or even more. Another option that I bring up because I actually saw it mentioned on the All Powers website is libraries and cafes or like similar vibes to that. I hadn't thought about it, but this might legitimately be an amazing idea. I love heading out to write scripts, but there is always that problem of finding the spots with the plugs because everyone's a wall hugger now because of devices. But with this, you can just plug in anywhere. You can be way far from a wall and you can just plug in your laptop, phone and all of your things and just charge up. Yes, there's also the other bit where you could just theoretically, you know, charge up your devices before leaving the house or work, but that's not always an option. So yay for more options for more people in more situations. Actually around the house for convenience of not having to be close to wall plugs is another one. Aside from production day drone charging, this is by far the most amount of use the S200 has had in our house. It's legitimately nice to just plop this battery bank down on a coffee table and plop a phone or battery charger into it instead of having to run a long cable over to a wall. Because sometimes it's just out of reach and you have to like move the couch or get an extender or just plop this on a coffee table, plug in, done. I wanna cover one more use case that you might be thinking of using this as, the emergency battery bank for your car. So from a safety perspective, you probably should never actually keep batteries like this in your car because of the extreme temperature variances, also known as summer be freaking hot. And in the winter, it be freaking cold AF. Batteries go boom in hot conditions. Batteries go dead in cold conditions. Batteries be like humans and dogs. They don't like the extremes. They just like being at a nice room temperature. So don't put them through extremes, which means probably not leaving them in your car. By the way, if the thought of why car batteries are fine sitting in your car's engine for seasons at a time, it's just because they're different types of batteries, different chemistries. You wouldn't want to carry around a 40 pound, 12 volt lead acid battery as a power bank for your phone, would you? No. So yeah, there's different batteries for different situations. Now onto the quirks of this power bank. It's pretty good, but there's a one-two punch when it comes to the quirks. Uh, I found that the first quirk is kind of annoying, but compounded with the second quirk, it almost makes for a fatal flaw for this entire power bank. Almost, and it's kind of situational. So let me explain. The on button is too clickable. Kind of funny sounding actually, but it is really, really clickable, even by accident. It's not inset at all, so you can't really put a piece of plastic or tape on it or something like that to protect it. Aside from 3D printing something that has a dud that can fit into a USB-A slot or something as a mounting point. I don't see how you could protect this. Like, it, it's it's not inset at all. That would solve most of this, uh, of my critique here. And here's why that matters. So you go ahead, you turn it off, you throw it in your bag, 
Okay, it's off. And uh, you throw it in your bag and then unknowingly knock the power button by accident. With most technology, that's not that big of a problem normally, except for that it's compounded by the fact that there is no auto off feature. So going with the previous situation, you take uh, your otherwise awesome power bank out a day, a week, or even a month later and realize that the power button got knocked at some point. It doesn't matter when. The fact is that this thing's been slowly draining for ages because once you click that power button, either on purpose or by accident, it's just staying on until you notice, or it drains itself to 0%. I did a quick test where I left this on for over 24 hours. Okay, we are at 100%. Gonna unplug and turn it off. Okay, it is off. Now we're going to accidentally turn it on. Huh, okay, that was a bit more than I expected. The unit lost about 5% per day while it was on standby. So after 20 days, you'll just have a dead battery if you accidentally click it and leave it on. But it's not all bad for the majority of situations that people will find themselves in because you'd most likely plug it in the night before, so it ends up being a real non-issue for 99% of the time. On to the battery cell type, an elephant in the room that you might have not even seen if I didn't shed light on it. Sorry, all powers. But it's this one specification line item right here. Battery type, ternary lithium battery. Here's the thing. Every battery type has its pros and cons, and there's no big practical difference for the majority of end users, except in this case for the expected battery longevity. So I asked All Powers directly what type of battery chemistry they use because ternary lithium ion is fairly ambiguous, and I want you to know the real deal. I kind of wanted to know too. I mean, <laughs> It's a review anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask these questions. Via email, they said that the battery type is NMC. For what it's worth, if you wanna learn more about this battery chemistry, there's one video in particular that someone put together which is very insightful and informative. I'll link it in the description below. But the gist of the video is this. Here are two power stations that look identical on the outside, but on the inside, the battery chemistry is very different. One is called NMC and the other is LFP. The third practical difference is battery lifespan. An LFP battery is going to last about six times longer than an NMC battery. If energy density and weight are your highest considerations, then you want an NMC battery in there. But if you want a battery that's going to last a really long time, you want to get an LFP based battery. So there you go. If you've watched this far, thank you very much and I hope it helped you. And if you are going to go through and buy this S200 or any other All Powers products on their website, get 10% off by using BD10 at checkout. So BD as in Benderum 10, or use my affiliate links in the description below. I always appreciate the kickback commissions, which comes at no cost to you. It just helps me make these videos and live life. So hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and bye!